materials is interested in a very wide, wide range of materials from uh, steels right through to graphene, the new uh, carbon material, through to device materials, through to ceramics. We're particularly interested in understanding how microstructure uh, relates to properties and so that we can deliver the best, uh, both the, the best new materials and understand existing materials a bit better. One of the strengths of uh, the School of Materials is our characterization facilities. These are really uh, fantastic. We're able to study a range of materials at, at very wide-ranging scales, from the very large scales right down to the smaller scales that we can image materials at. And this provides us with a tremendous way of understanding the relationship between structure and performance. We use a very wide range of beams to study materials. We use neutrons, which are very penetrating. We use X-rays, which are a little bit less penetrating. And we use electrons and photons, physical, uh, ordinary optical light. By putting all of those pictures together, we can build up a multifaceted uh, picture of, uh, an understanding of different materials because different beams interact differently with the material. Some tell us about, uh, we can use to t tell us something about the chemistry, something to tell us about the structure. And by putting all those levels of information together, we have a fantastic way of understanding the different scales at which materials operate. It, it seems that we're always getting new toys, uh, but I think uh, one of the most interesting new toys that we're, uh, we, we've, just, uh, we've just been able to procure is a Chemistem Titan. Now this combines very high resolution so that we can understand uh, behavior at the atomic scale with chemical information so that we can see uh, the, the chemistry that's going on, whether that's to better understand a battery, to better understand how we can exploit graphene, the new material that uh, was developed in Manchester, or whether it's to understand nuclear materials which are used for power generation. Traditionally, you would measure in two dimensions. You would take an image and you would then use your, your eyes would work out and do the best you can to understand the 3D nature. By putting together many hundreds of images, all taken at different angles, you can build up a 3D image of an object, rather like you might, might do in your mind's eye when you have a paperweight in your hand and you rotate it to work out what's on the inside. What we can then do is, if we're using non-destructive techniques, we can actually take many 3D images, and by stacking together those 3D images in a kind of cartoon, we can get a four, what we call a 4D image, or a 3D movie. And in this way, we can see how materials are formed, we can see how materials behave in service, and we can see how materials behave when they degrade. So this it really is an exciting move forward. Uh, and by putting uh, together the different views, we can better optimise and, and deliver new materials and new devices. One of the big problems is the amount of data. You can imagine if you're using a camera, you very soon fill the, uh, the memory. But of course, we, each of our images it comprises around 2,000 images. So we have very large amounts of data. So every 3D image is 2,000 images, and we may collect 10 or 20 or even more images to build up a, an animation. So handling all that data is very complex. We need sophisticated computer algorithms to reconstruct the 3D images, and we need complex uh, analysis procedures to extract out all the quantitative information we want from this feast of, 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 of imagery. Well, we've just recently um, been awarded the BP International Centre for Advanced Materials along with Cambridge, Imperial and Urbana-Champaign in Illinois. And this is providing us with a focus for work in the energy sector, understanding how to uh, improve materials so that we can extract oil and gas from more difficult regions and also helping us to develop alternative energy strategies including wind, uh, fuel cells, and solar, what they call solar fuels. So that's one particular focus. Another focus, of course, is, is in carbon-based electronics and carbon-based materials, including graphene and, and nanotube technology. And then we also do an awful lot of work in the area of nuclear, trying to improve nuclear materials so that we can build and uh, help to build and design the next generation of nuclear plants. 
man's ambitions have always been limited by the materials that you have to hand. So the better we can understand materials, then the, the faster we can develop new applications. In particular, understanding materials' behaviours across all of the scales that are relevant, from the atomic scale, understanding the things that go on at the grain scale, understanding how things go on at the uh, structural scales is also very important. And by putting all that information together, we can help to design new materials. Some of those will mimic biological structures. So we'll be building scaffolds, for example, on which we can grow cells uh, to help in biomaterials. We'll be looking at how to design batteries that don't fail after such a short lifetime and that can be recharged many, many times. These sorts of discoveries are going to be really important over the next 10 to 20 years and the characterization facilities we have here provide us a unique insight, a unique window into their behaviour. Mm -hmm.